Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to go ahead and um, do a quick run through of a frequentist binomial test, uh, a sort of a legacy test that uh, is useful for non-parametric questions. Before I jump in to that, I wanted to let you all know that um, I am running the latest release 0.12.2 Two couple of bug fixes from uh, a major release of 0 0.12. So um, even though it's in the same playlist as some of the other ones and has a different sort of a different title to it, uh, it is sort of the ongoing series that I'm producing. So let's jump into binomials. So here I am in my data set, and uh, this was a data set that I produced almost a decade ago in uh, early graduate school um, with reasoning. So I have uh, what, what I'm going to show the binomial test with is this booklet. So I have modus tollens, that's what MT stands for, and then I have booklets that were modus ponens. Uh, and so these are, are various ways, uh, two, two of the valid ways that you can present conditional uh, conditional arguments. So MP is if P then Q, P therefore Q, and MT is if P then Q, not Q, therefore not P. Okay, so those are the, the two booklets that I'm going to use this uh, binomial test for. Uh, so how we go into the binomial test is really easy. We go into frequencies, then we go, we're going to do classical because this is the frequentist stuff here. And but there also is by Bayesian tests. So we're going to click on binomial test. And um, you can see here that in the variables box is a very thin display. And we have our uh, we have our uh, options and then we have our results. And the idea here is that I just want to put either in a nominal or a ordinal variable, and I'm going to test it against a value that I would consider to be my chance value. And so really a binomial test is determining whether or not uh, responses, frequencies in a given variable are below or above your test value. So if you had four options, then you would use a 0.25. If you had three options, then you would use a 0.33. Whatever theoretical test value you would use, um, you would put here in test value. By default, 0.5 is there. Okay, so that's by default, but you can change it. It's a text box. So I'm going to throw in booklet over here, and what you already see is that it calculates the binomial test. And I have so I have MT and MP, and you can see clearly that um, these two aggregate proportions are not different from 0.5. These book these booklets together. So all 67 folks that uh, did this test. All 67 or in 66 over here, all of these folks pretty much accepted the conclusions of MT and MP at, a, at a appropriately the same rate. Now, the, the idea that I want you to, to recognize here is that I don't have any different groupings of of values so these include both true and false statements right you would generally speaking uh generally speaking accept true statements and reject false statements and that's why you see these two values here but i just wanted to show you what comes up in the binomial test so we have the level of our variable so we have our booklet variable we have the two levels we have our ends um, we have the totals and then we have the proportion. This is the value that is tested against in the binomial equation. And then we have a P value generated for uh, proportions. OK, so we have our test value over here. Now, this alternative hypothesis, again, it's a it's a hypothesis test. So we can choose our theoretical start point. So if we're saying this is not equal to anything, then we don't know if it's going to be high or lower than our test value. Then we'll choose this one. By default, this radio button is selected. But if I had an idea 
that if I could, if I separated out the trues and the falses in this case, if I had an idea, then if I just said true, then I could say, okay, well, the test value is going to be greater than 0.5. Okay. And you can see my p values do change because um, the directional hypothesis, I've, I'm putting all of my eggs on one side of the distribution. Similarly, here with less than. Uh, the less than the test value. So if I just did falses, for example, false statements, then I would imagine that um, people would be less accepting uh, at a chance level. So then chance. Uh, so there, this is the test value that I would use uh, less than less than that. And so I can decide to. Um, either one based on my theoretical start point. But I'm going to go ahead and put it back to not equal to because um, it includes both true and false statements. I can get descriptive plots, okay? And this will show me my um, test value with a dotted line, and then it will show me the value, the proportion, that's the dot here with 95% confidence intervals on them. And so you can see here MT and MP. They are quite uh, on the dotted lines. We can also get additional uh, statistics on the table. And so this is our 95% confidence intervals that are represented here on the bars. So it's just these values here are put in the bars. And then you can get the Vofk Selke uh, maximum P ratio if you'd like as well. So that is how you do binomial tests in JAS. Please leave your comments, questions, feedback in the comments below. Uh, stay tuned for more of these JASP tutorials. Thanks for watching.